of. Let me go ahead and start recording. Um, I will uh, make the event available um, on my Google Drive and I'll be sending out a link uh, to the people who registered just in case um, they did not, uh, they were not able to um, jump into the Zoom. Um, so the way this event's going to work, um, I have a set of slides that I'll be going through. So I'll go through a presentation about the early college program. I'll be providing some links um, yeah. to various documents and sites. Uh, those will be, I'll put in the chat function or the chat feature of Zoom. And then I would ask that as we're going, if you have questions that come up, if you could simply type those questions in the chat. And then once I am finished, I'll start on Q&A. And the first questions I'll do is I'll go through the questions that are in the chat. And once we have gone through all of those questions, if there is anything else, um, then it'll be more of a kind of an open session Q&A um, as, as we're going through. So let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. So right now you should see my screen. There should be a set of slides that say early college program. Um, do you all see that? Yes. Perfect, perfect one. Well, I always, say, I always yes. need to make sure. Great, I always need to make sure. Um, I'm rocking three screens, so just need to make sure. So again, um, uh, Luke Lammers, Director of Secondary Education for the Francis Hall School District. The way the early college program works, uh, we have a partnership uh, with the St. Charles um, uh, uh, St. Charles Community College. There are partnerships like this really throughout the state, and I'm going to go through kind of the genesis of these programs. But our chosen partner for this program is St. Charles Community College. Um, so the, where this came from, uh, several years ago at the state level, there was some legislation um, that was passed that established something called the Core 42. And essentially what this is, it started with a small number of courses that no matter what, um, as long as they were taken at a state um, sanctioned uh, college or university or a community college, then those courses, as long as they had something called a Missouri transfer, and the acronym for that is MOTOR, as long as they had a MOTOR number, that course, the credit for that was guaranteed by law to transfer to any public college or university within Missouri. Private schools didn't have to, but what we're learning is most of them do accept them. Um, and, and so once that was established, it started with about 100, 150 courses. And over the years, it has grown to be literally thousands of, of college courses um, at all of the uh, state uh, colleges and universities that are guaranteed by law to transfer. So there's really a, a small handful of different ways. Um, there's, there's three different ways that these courses are guaranteed to transfer. The first, uh, is what we call in our district lane one. So students who are, are attempting to do lane one, they're essentially trying to get their gen ed requirements done while they're still in high school. So these students earn anywhere from 42 to 48 credit hours of college credit while still in high school. So when they graduate with their high school diploma and walk across that stage at the family arena, they are carrying with them the, their gen ed requirements are done. So when they start at a state uh, school here in Missouri, um, then all of their gen eds are done. And, and, and what we find is many of these students, they can either finish their four year degree early or they can complete a master's degree in the amount of time that it would have taken them normally to finish a bachelor's degree. So students who are doing lane one, once they get those 42 uh, transferable credit hours, as long as those courses have motor numbers, they're guaranteed to transfer to any state school in Missouri. And in order to make it work, um, they need to take four classes per semester at St. Charles Community College and two classes at their um, home high school, whether that be North, Howell High or Central. Um, that lane is open to juniors and seniors only in our district. 
Um, and there is a, a guidebook that I will put in the chat, a link to the guidebook. Uh, let me put that in the chat right now. Um, so I'll actually, let me do, I'm going to put three things into the chat. I'm going to do a link to the early college website that has all of these documents. And if you want to go straight to the guidebook, that's right here. So there's a link to the early college website, a link to the guidebook. And then if it's something that you decide you want to do with your kiddos, there's the application that you can, that you would need to fill out. So, um, if students are gonna do the uh, lane one to get the, all of the gen eds done, we have uh, gone through all of their courses um, that have motor numbers and compared them to our courses. And we have identified a um, set schedule that if students take these classes according to that timetable, we have vetted it and we know that that will meet our graduation requirements and it will fulfill all of the courses needed to get a kind of a general education, all of the um, uh, all of the, the 42 transferable credit hours uh, for the um, gen ed requirements. And so if a student follows that schedule that's outlined in the guidebook, then they're going to be they're going to be fine. They're, they're going to um, hit all of the graduation requirements for us and earn those credits. Another option, this is a more ambitious option, but it is possible to pull off. Um, it is possible for students to learn or to earn a full associate's degree at the same time that they graduate high school. So as they walk across the stage at the family arena, they also have a full associate's degree in their pocket. Now, this usually means that a student is taking all of their classes at St. Charles Community College. Now this year that's online because of COVID, but in past years and in future years, it, it'll be mostly on campus, but I have a feeling um, that they're going to hold on to a lot of their virtual offerings, just like we will. Um, so if students are participating in lane two, they earn a full associate's degree before high school graduation, take almost all of their classes on campus at St. Charles Community College, in order to actually complete the associate's degree, it may require some additional classes over and above. So they might have to take a couple of summer, summer courses or maybe an additional online course because most of the associate's degrees require anywhere from 64 to 67 credit hours to complete. And if a student takes 15 um, credit hours for four straight semesters for us, they're only gonna have 60. So it is an ambitious target, but we do have right now, we have, a small handful of our juniors who, as long as they do next year what they've done this year, they will graduate next year with associate's degrees and high school diplomas at the same time. It's a really cool opportunity. And then by law, that associate's degree is guaranteed to transfer to any college um, in the state of Missouri. Uh, lane three is another way. Lane three is open to all classes. So grades 9, 10, 11, 12, students from any grade can take up to three classes at a time um, at St. Charles Community College. And as long as they are motor numbered, we will count them for high school credit. Um, and so I just saw a question come into the chat. I know I said I was going to answer the questions later, but this one, since we're on it, um, have they considered offering this to sophomores? The way sophomores um, can access these classes is to do it through lane three, and they can do up to three at a time. Um, but we do put that safeguard in to make sure that we don't have sophomores taking on a little bit too much. Um, that is an attempt to make sure we kind of protect some of our younger students from uh, taking too big a bite at the apple at uh, such an early stage. But we do currently have, we have sophomores right now who at the end of the school year, they will have six classes done. They'll have 18 credit hours done. And then over the junior and senior year, then they'll go into lane two or lane one. So it's a, we do have some that are going there. It is extremely difficult. It is extremely difficult for ninth graders to even be accepted into the program. Um, that St. Charles Community College has sets a very, very, very high bar for that, um, but it is possible. And then the question that came up in there, um, would the students then change lanes? Yes, absolutely they would. 
Um, so associate's degree options that are available through this, the safest option is the Associate of Arts. That's the, um, it, it includes that core 42, all the gen eds are part of the Associate of Arts. And so that is the um, safest option for students to be able to try to accomplish before they graduate high school. It is possible to go for an Associate of Arts in Teaching, an Associate of Fine Arts, or an Associate of Science. The problem with that, though, is that some of those gen eds are not in there. And so those gen eds align very strongly with the courses that our students have to take in order to graduate high school from us. So some of our high school requirements um, are not included in the AAT, the AFA, and the AS. So a student who is trying to accomplish those things puts themselves at risk of possibly not meeting our high school graduation requirements, many of which are mandated by state law. Um, so that if a student's going to go for an AAT, an AFA, or an AS, it's possible, but they have one heck of an uphill climb ahead of them. So that's why we recommend staying away from those and going toward the Associate of Arts if they're trying to earn a full associate's degree before they graduate. Uh, how, do, how do we handle the financial side of this? So um, under the program, families are responsible for the cost of tuition, books, and fees. Um, the cool thing on that is the uh, St. Charles Community College has given students that are participating in this program a discount. Um, it's actually 57% uh, for next year, but it's 50 bucks a credit hour for the classes, which um, if, if I were to go take a class at St. Charles Community College as a county resident, I'd be paying something like $107. If I didn't live in the county, it'd be 100 and I want to say 40 something. Um, so 50 bucks a credit hour is, is, is an extraordinarily good rate that they offer for our students who are participating in this program. Now there are still fees for books. Um, and we know that sometimes transportation can be an issue for students who want to take advantage of this. So we, we had a plan set up for this year to run one shuttle bus from each of our high schools to the campus in the morning to St. Charles Community College. And then in the afternoon, a shuttle bus would bring students back so that they could ride a bus home. And then COVID happened and all of their classes were online. So we didn't do that this year. We also know that that that's like the best we can do for transportation but we also know that sometimes the St. Charles Community College schedule doesn't really work for having kids leave the campus and get back to their um, home campus in time to catch a bus it's something we can make available and we know full well it might not work for every situation that's why we strongly encourage students to drive um, but we know that that can be a bit of a barrier. And so we make transportation available for students so that they can still participate in the program. Um, so that's why we say it's that the bus is available if needed. Uh, we, we do not do the purchasing of books. So families do the purchasing of the books. We do have um, financial assistance available. So if your student participates in the federal government's free or reduced lunch program, um, we are able to cover the full cost of tuition, books, and fees for this program. We ask that the families still purchase the books through the um, um, the bookstore at St. Charles Community College, but you wouldn't actually pay for them. They keep a tab, they keep a tally, and then they invoice us later for that. Um, so we, we do, we're doing everything we can to make sure that there isn't a financial barrier to um, participating in the program. So in order to be able to get into the program, um, a student has to have at least a 2.5 GPA. If they're going into lanes one and two, that's the 42 uh, credit hours or the full associate's degree, then they have to be a junior or a senior in order to enter. So a rising junior or senior. Um, they need to have algebra, algebra two has to be done. Personal finance has to be done before they get into the program or they have a plan in place to complete it maybe during summer school beforehand, which often happens with personal finance, or if they're in say lane one, they're gonna take algebra two as one of their two classes at our high school. And then the, the rest of the classes are done there. Um, they, the student has to submit an online application 
through St. Charles Community College so that they can create a profile in their system. And then there's like an entrance exam that they take, an academic skills assessment that has to be done. Um, that's one of their requirements. And what we look for is, for our applicants is we take a look to see if you, um, as a student, if you have had success in rigorous courses, um, do you have a record of good citizenship and behavior? Have you attended school reliably? Um, at least 90% attendance. Um, and then there are some specific uh, admission requirements for rising ninth graders, rank, not rising ninth graders and rising 10th graders that are outlined in that um, early college guidebook that we won't get into here. But if, if your student fits that, that description, then they can pop open that, um, you can pop open that guidebook there and take a look at the um, requirements for that. Um, so who is responsible for what in this program? So we ask that students and families that uh, you're responsible for making sure that the courses you, you take are that they fulfill graduation requirements. Um, technically, unless you fall, we do make the transportation available um, uh, with the bus in the morning and the afternoon. But outside of that, families are responsible for transportation to and from St. Charles Community College. Um, tuition fees and books are the responsibility of the families. Um, families are responsible for obtaining all the books and materials. Following both academic calendars, here's what that would mean. So um, let's say we have fall break scheduled for the middle of October, but their fall break is a week later. So their college classes would happen um, during fall break. So students would have to still attend their their college courses during the fall break and then the following week when the college is off if we're in session the student would still have to attend the classes with us um so that's so a student doing this is going to have to um uh, take advantage uh, or i'm sorry fulfill both academic calendars so even if that class happens during a break, a student is expected to attend it. Um, our school district's uh, code of student conduct for behavior, that uh, will be enforced. So that is in play uh, while students are in attendance in these courses. But St. Charles Community College has their own behavioral guidelines. And so those also need to be uh, followed by students who are in the program. Um, students have to maintain 90% attendance to stay in the program and have to get grades of C or better in all of the classes. Um, and it's St. Charles Community College's uh, policy that if any student in this program earns a class or earns a grade of a D or lower, um, then they are removed from the program. Um, if there if, if there are students who um, the professors over there are used to students um, in high school participating in these classes and they might have a track meet or a play that they're in. Um, so in that situation, it is the student's responsibility to communicate with the professors um, to make sure that they're aware of any conflicts that come up. Um, and then of course, complying with any registration dates and deadlines. And then uh, some one of the questions that comes up frequently is how does this imp impact things like A plus funds and financial aid for students who are applying to um, other colleges after this. So A plus is a program that if a student completes all of the requirements at their high school, um, they can get tuition covered at um, up to a full associate's degree at any community college in the state. And there are also some four-year schools who award, do financial awards for this. Um, so if a student does the early college program, does that mean A plus goes away for them? So the, there's a yes and no answer to this. So if the A plus is there until a student completes an associate's degree. So if a student does uh, 42 credit hours while they're still in high school the, and they still qualify for A plus, then when they go to a community college after high school, they would still be covered by A plus funds until they earn enough credits to get that associate's degree. At that point, A plus funds would expire. Um, so that's, so A plus, it, this could negatively impact a student's ability to qualify for A plus. And that's something that a family needs to take into account before they decide to apply for this program. Um, and then with regard to financial aid, it is families should reach out to any prospective college that they might attend 
to see how participation in this program may impact their ability to earn financial aid in college. What we're finding is that more and more uh, four-year colleges or universities, they issue financial aid packages that cover four years, not a bachelor's degree, but four years. So as a, if a student walks in with 42 credit hours, great. You still have four years worth of financial aid available to you. So maybe you can finish a master's degree in that amount of time using their financial aid package. But that's not every college or university. And there's really no way if, for us to put together an exhaustive list of this college does this, this college does this. And that's, so, that's why we advise families to reach out to prospective colleges to ask that question. Um, okay. See, there's... Okay, and remember, a reminder, as we go through this, if you have questions, please put them in the chat. And when I'm done with the presentation component, we'll, we'll address any questions that come up. Um, other things to keep in mind, um, in our school district, any student in any of our high schools before they graduate, we require that they, they, have, that they take end of course assessments for English 2, Algebra 1, or Algebra 2, depending on which course they take in high school, um, Biology, and government. So students who are participating in this program will still be required to take end of course exams for the state for those classes. So if a student is not taking government with us, but they're taking uh, uh, Politics 101 over at St. Charles Community College, we will still schedule the student to come over to one of our sites and take the government end of course exam. Um, as, a, as one of the requirements that what's one of the things that the state, state requires of our students and we also require. Um, we also um, ask that our students before they graduate take one of the uh, college and career assessments that are listed there. So the ACT, which is usually taken by students who are planning to go to four-year colleges, the ACT work keys, which is usually taken by students who are planning to go straight into the workforce, and or the ASVAB, which is the Armed Services voca Vocational Ability, or Vocational Aptitude Battery. Um, usually those assessments are taken by students who are uh, going into the military, but as long as you take, if a student takes it before they turn 16, then the military doesn't have access to those results. But it, it, uh, it can give a student an idea of um, what their aptitudes and interests are. And so, before a student graduates high school, they have to do one of those three. So if they're in um, the early college program and taking classes their junior year, um, when we schedule the ACT, we will say, hey, on that day, you're going to need to miss whatever classes you're in and you're going to need to take the ACT with us. Um, so that's something that will still have to happen. Uh, let's see, AP courses. If students are taking um, classes through the early college program at St. Charles Community College, but maybe say at Howell North, they're still they're also taking um, AP Lang with a teacher over there. If they're going to be taking the AP exam and that's scheduled on say May 10th, then if they're supposed to take a class at St. Charles Community College that day, they're going to have to miss it in order to be able to take the um, AP course, or the the AP exam at their home site. Um, Fridays, this is something that comes up. So um, at the classes at St. Charles Community College, um, are, they run from Monday through Thursday. They, I can't think of anything that they offer that has a class that runs on a Friday. So any student but who is entering lane one or lane two of the early college program in the fall of their first year in the program, they are required to take um, a, a class called College 101. It is a one credit hour class. It meets for 16 weeks on Friday mornings. So on Fridays, the student would be expected to take that class, but that class will end. And then so what do students do on that Friday? So we recommend students taking, maybe they could take an online course at um, St. Charles Community College or through us. And they could dedicate their Fridays to working on that. They could go to um, uh, the, the testing center um, or to the library or um, any other student center at St. Charles Community College. That could be a day where mm -hmm. they do coursework. Um, it's good for them to build something in that day so that they don't just have an open day. Um, and the other thing to keep in mind is 
while students are participating in this, they are still Francis Hall High School student or Francis Hall School District High School students. So we, if we have a need to have the students come in to our campuses for to participate in something, maybe that's um, a ring assembly, maybe that's um, you know a state required assembly, uh, you know dealing with whatever topic, or maybe it's graduation practice or um, a making good decisions assembly before prom, we we can require students to come in on a Friday to participate in those things. And then just other information to consider um, if you're thinking about this. Um, uh, you know, when students are in these classes, they the, the professors typically don't talk to us if we have questions about things. They treat these students like they are college students. So students will have login information to their courses in Canvas over at St. Charles Community College. Um, so we require that participants in this sign what's called a FERPA waiver that only applies to this program. So this would require that students um, provide their course login, their Canvas login, to counselors and administrators upon request so that we can if something comes up log into their canvas and see are they attending these classes are they doing the work are they completing the assessments are they doing everything that they're supposed to be doing um, so that's something that um, you know a regular college student would have those logins and they wouldn't have to surrender those logins to anybody but because we are awarding credit for this and they're still high school students uh, we require that FERPA waiver um, as far as honors points um, any course that is considered a second year course or above so a 200 level course or above will carry an honors point so an a would be worth 5.0 uh, you know a b would be worth an a a c would be worth a b um, students, you know, if you have an athlete, somebody who's uh, participating in activities, we have several students who are participating in interscholastic, interscholastic activities um, who are in this program. Um, there are some expectations on uh, how many classes, how many credit hours would count them as a full time student and they would still then be able to participate in you know football track what have you all of that is outlined in the early college um, guidebook um, so in order I'm sorry did, did a question come up is there a question oh, okay sorry um, and then uh, how do the courses translate to um, a, a student's transcript. So if a student is taking a three credit hour college course, that counts as a half a credit. So here's here's the, the example that comes up. So let's say a student is takes, um, instead of taking chemistry at Francis Hall Central High School, they take a chemistry course at, uh, that's a bad example. Let's go with something different. Let's go with a government class. Instead of taking a government class at um, Francis Hall Central High School, they take POL 101 at um, St. Charles Community College. So that POL 101 that they take will count as a half a credit. So they will still need another social studies class for the spring. That class that they take in the fall will not count for a full year of class. Um, so three credit hour class counts as a half a unit of high school credit. And then a five credit hour class will count as one unit of credit. So you'll see that sometimes in math and in um, science that those um, courses, if it's a five credit hour class, that will count as a full year course. Um, so in order to be considered a full-time student, a lane one student would take two classes with us and 12 credit hours at St. Charles Community College or more. And if they're in lane two, as long as they're taking 15 credit hours, they are a full-time student. That's full-time for us and in the eyes of uh, MISHA for um, eligibility for activities. Um, math, we usually recommend that students, if, especially if you're an advanced math student, that you take your courses with us. Um, only a very small handful of math courses at St. Charles Community College have those motor numbers for transfer. Um, so that's why we recommend um, that you take the math classes with us. 
And then the, the, you know, the negative side, it is possible for students to be removed from the program. So if attendance goes below 90%, if you are in any grade that's below a C in any of these classes, um, St. Charles Community College does not allow you to continue in the program. Um, if there's um, an academic dishonesty or plagiarism colleges, you know, of course that's a big deal anywhere. It is a giant deal in colleges. Um, so they would dismiss you from the program if that were to happen. Or if you have repetitive or major violations of either code of conduct, um, if you do not qualify for financial assistance and you're not paying for the tuition books and fees, then they would uh, remove you from the program. Um, if we are looking and because of your involvement in this, you're not making adequate progress toward graduation, then we would remove you from the program to make sure let's do first things first and focus on high school graduation. Um, if a, a home high school asks a student to report on day X and the student repeatedly does not do that, that could warrant removal from the program. Um, if uh, um, counselors or principals are asking for logins to courses to be able to check on your progress, and you're not providing that, we can remove you from the program and just overall any abuse of privileges related to participation in the program. Um, and then how to apply for this. So um, I have a QR code up there on the screen. Um, you can take that and it'll take you right to, or uh, scan that, it'll take you right to our early college website. There is a guidebook link there. There's an application in that. I've also linked it in the chat. So if you're interested, I would download and read that entire early college guidebook. Um, any questions that you have about the program can be directed to your school's college and career counselor. Um, and then once you decide that this is something you want to do, you fill out the, uh, the, the application forms that apply to whichever lane you want to do. If your family participates in the um, free and reduced lunch program, you fill out the financial assistance application and you submit all those forms to your school's college and career counselor. They then come to me, we review it. And if it's approved, then you're open to enroll in your courses at St. Charles Community College. Um, some dates to consider um, on April 12th, enrollment opened for the fall of 2021 the cl the classes are not full yet so it's we're still we're still fine on that on uh, may 7th we have uh, what we say is a soft deadline we would like anybody who's considering being in the program to have their materials into us by may 7th we will work with families who turn it in after but it helps us gain a, get a read on costs transportation needs things of that nature so that we can plan appropriately um, if a student is doing summer courses through this program, those start on June 7th. Fall courses for them, for St. Charles Community College and for us, all start on the same day on August 23rd. That's kind of a unique coincidence there. And then, oop, I went backward. And if you have questions, I have included contact information for the college and career counselors. So at Central, that is Michelle Brewer. She works in the, in the school counseling office there, and that's her contact information. At Francis Hall High School, that's Jennifer Lowry. At Francis Hall North, that is Brooke Prestige. And then if you have questions for uh, somebody at St. Charles Community College, their point of contact is Kathy Brockreitens, and that is her contact information. You can also direct con uh, questions to me. My contact information is there. Um, and so I've been doing a lot of talking. I'm not used to talking uh, that long. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the questions from the chat. And I'm gonna take us off of screen sharing. And now we're back on this and I'll start addressing the questions. So the first one, uh, I'll, for those of you who joined in, is this program open to sophomores? Uh, for lane three, yes, it is open to sophomores. Um, so sophomores would be able to take up to three courses um, each semester at St. Charles Community College, but they wouldn't be able to go in to do the full um, uh, 42 credit hour option yet or the full associate's degree option yet but they could get a jump start on it. Uh, we recommend sophomores who are considering doing this to, to maybe dip their toe in the water. These are college courses and so if you're dealing with a sophomore you're talking about somebody who's 
15 years old in the fall of their sophomore year. It's just something we need to keep in mind about their overall um, just kind of readiness to take on that huge of a challenge. But yes, it is open. Um, and then if they then want to stay with it and change to lanes one or two, they can absolutely do that. Uh, let's see, how do they work out their high school schedule and their SEC schedule at the, in, in the same semester? Here's how that usually works. So um, Kathy uh, over at St. Charles Community College, she is used to working with students from Francis Howell and knows um, what courses align with our graduation requirements. Any student who is doing this will have a sit down meeting with the college and career counselor at um, either how high, how north, or how central, who will sit down with them and say, okay, so you're taking this class, this class, this class, that will fulfill our requirements for this, that, and this. And so what you still need to take with us is this class and this class. Um, so that, that, that's all, that's all part of the program or part of the process when students apply uh, for this program. Um, can a senior student athlete attend classes at the high school even though they are in 15 hours of classes at St. Charles Community College like weight training for example yeah that's possible um, we do have students who are currently doing that um, the the key is the classes that the students take scheduling it out sometimes students will take night classes sometimes they'll take an a, an asynchronous online class that doesn't have like Di the digital version of face-to-face -face conferences. It's more like a, almost like an online correspondence course. But yeah, it, it, a lot of that depends on the timing. But yes, we do have students who, who do that. Um, can students be enrolled in the work program and the early college program at the same time? Yes, we do have, I think three or four students who are doing that right now. But yes, that it's easiest to do if the student is in um, lane one which is the 42 credit hour option or lane three, which is kind of a la carte class at a time. Um, trying to do work program and the full associates, that probably can't work. Uh, we, I would say we have not had any students attempt that yet. Um, let's see, can you give an example of an a la carte class a ninth or 10th grader would take? Uh, yeah, let me, I'm gonna pop open the guidebook here. I do have some of those. Um, identified in there. So uh, examples, maybe they could take um, um, like a US history course, uh, American history up to 1867, or American history after 1867, or maybe a psychology or a sociology or um, um, their, their version of American government, which is uh, Politics 101, those are some courses. But just off the top of my head, those are the ones that could naturally fit. Um, but inside that early college guidebook, there is, if you're a ninth grader doing this, these are some courses that would be good for you to take, to consider taking. If you're a 10th grader, these are some courses that would be good for you to take. Um, and then talking more about the time. Oh yeah, so there was a question, how would you work out um, high school schedule in their St. Charles County or St. Charles Community College schedule in the same semester? Uh, it, yeah, it, it, a lot of it comes out with timing. So a student would take in there, if I were to look at their schedule within our system, you would see, you know, maybe first hour, this class, second hour, this class, and then it will say off or off for dual, off for dual enrollment for the rest of their courses and then they would then travel over to that site to take their courses um, or maybe that maybe that'll be maybe it'll be reverse they'll take the St. Charles Community College classes in the morning and then they'll come back for the afternoon and take courses that way we do have a couple of situations where kids are taking entirely night classes all of the classes that they're taking are night classes um, and they're in the uh, associate's degree lane and that's more for family need, or maybe they need to have a job, or they're watching, they're helping at home with some younger siblings and things of that nature. Um, so those are, we can work, this is one of the cool things about this program is we can do some creative things to work with students' needs and their schedules. So that is all the questions that I see in the chat. Uh, let's see, will these students get scheduling preference over others? No, they do not get scheduling preference over others. It's, um, yeah, we, we, we handle each case and their needs as appropriate. 
Um, but no, there's not, they were, they don't get any uh, kind of preferential um, slot when it comes time to uh, making schedules. Are there any other questions from anybody else who is on the call here? You could go in the chat or you could just unmute yourself and, and ask verbally. All right, so apologize if I miss this. Can students take online courses? Yes, absolutely. Any course um, that essentially, any course that has what's called a Missouri transfer number or a motor number, um, a student can take that, whether that's in person, whether that's online, they have some blended courses where maybe they only meet once a week and all of the other stuff happens online, or maybe they only meet for the lab portion of the class and everything else happens online. This year in particular, all classes were online. A very small number of courses required students to come in to do an occasional lab or something in art where they like had to go. It's hard to send a hunk of clay home um, and, and, and ask a kid to do pottery at home. So there's a very small number of those. But what we've learned this year is, yes, our, our kids are just as successful in the online uh, courses through St. Charles Community College. Yes. Um, can you compare the benefits of taking dual enrollment classes versus taking AP classes, which could also result in college credit? Both are wonderful, wonderful options. So um, the early college courses through us, as long as there is a, as long as that class has the associated Missouri transfer number, it is guaranteed to be accepted at any state college or university. So Mizzou, CMO, any, any state college or university. Um, an AP uh, class, if a student takes the class, they must then also pass the AP exam by getting a score of three, four, or five. So there is always the chance, it's not that common, but there is always a chance that a student takes the AP class, takes the uh, AP exam, does not pass the exam. Then they don't get the college credit for that. There are also a small number of colleges, um, some in Missouri, some nationwide um, who if you maybe instead of getting a three they require that you had to get a four on that AP exam or they're not going to accept any AP they want to teach you the chemistry you'll see that in some specialized um, if a school is known for their engineering program maybe they don't if you took AP physics they're like okay that's great we're going to teach you physics our way um, so these, if a student, if, if you know for sure, like if your student knows for sure, they're going to Mizzou, I'm going to Mizzou. Um, these courses, as long as they have the motor number, it's guaranteed to be accepted at Mizzou by law. Um, there's a state law that says they must accept it. Whereas with the AP courses, which are great, our AP courses are fantastic. Um, they're nationally normed. Um, the, you know, they're, that the experience of preparing for that exam is really valuable for a student who's heading um, off to college because they're going to be taking big important exams when they're in college so that preparation for that kind of meeting that national standard that's a huge benefit of an AP class so that's why we often have students in this program who do both they take classes through St. Charles Community College and they take an AP class at home or at their home site Are there any other questions from anybody? Okay, so I am gonna put my contact information in the chat here. It was, it's in all the documents, but I'm still gonna put it here. Sorry, there that is. And then here is my phone number. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Um, your school's college and career counselors can handle any question that you have. Um, I have also recorded this and will be making it available. I may upload it to the um, website and send that link out to everybody who participated. Um, 
let's see. Oh, here comes a couple more questions. Will you be sending out this presentation as a reference? Ah, we're thinking the same thing right there. Uh, yes, I yes I will be. Um, got some thank yous. No, thank you guys for participating in this. I um, I hope that this intrigued you and. Um, I think it's a wonderful opportunity for our students. Um, we're seeing more and more high schools around the state that are doing this very thing. So it's, it's awesome that you're interested in this and uh, we hope we can help you uh, and your student to earn some college credits before they're done with high school. So thank you all.